Hello, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 27C. This tutorial will cover investments in fair value through other comprehensive income, or FVOCI, bonds, reporting under IFRS 9. This tutorial is a supplemental resource to the Arnold and Kyle Open Educational Resource Text, Volume 1. This tutorial has one learning objective, which is to review how to account for debt investments in bonds classified as fair value through other comprehensive income, or FVOCI, under IFRS using the effective interest rate method. This is the only method that's allowable under IFRS. This video is based on the Tiberius Limited B example, so please make sure that you're familiar with the data and requirements for that problem. And this video covers scenario three. So the requirement for scenario three is to assume that the company reports under IFRS and classifies the investment as fair value through other comprehensive income or FVOCI. We have to prepare the journal entries to record these transactions. The purchase on July 1st, 2020. The interest payment received at December 31st, 2020. The remeasurement of the bonds to market value at December 31st, 2020. The subsequent interest payment to be received on June 30th, 2021. The partial sale of the bonds on November 1st, 2021. Then a subsequent remeasurement to par on December 31st, 2021. And then finally, the interest payment for the remaining bonds on June 30th, 2022. But that will also have to come after a payment of interest also on December 31st, 2021. So this is a pretty comprehensive example. The first entry is to record the acquisition or the purchase of the bonds on July 1st, 2020. Remember, the present value is required with 39 periods, 2% interest, which is one half of the 4% yield to maturity, 15,000 payment, which is one half of the 4% regular interest payment, or 2%, the $500,000 face value, and then, of course, as an FV in your calculator. So the present value is 634,513. So we'll debit FVOCI investments and credit cash for 634,513. Our next requirement is to record the interest payment at December 31st, 2020. We will debit cash for 15,000. And here's another excerpt of the amortization table. So 15,000 in cash paid. We've already determined a number of times the interest calculation and the amortization calculation, but in case you forgot, the balance of 634,513 times 2% effective rate interest will give you 12,690, and the difference between the payment and the interest is the amortization premium. So credit interest revenue, 12,690, credit FVOCI investments for 2,310. We've put it in the T account, and so the balance after the December 31st payment and before remeasurement is 632203. The next item is to remeasure the bonds at year end. And so what we do know is that at December 31st, 2020, the value of the bonds is determined to be 602293, and this is given. That makes this adjustment between the balance before remeasurement and after simply just a plug. We are going to credit FVOCI investments for 29,910, and that's what's going on in this journal entry here at the 31st of December. We will credit FVOCI investments for 29,910, and at the same time, we're going to debit OCI for unrealized gains and losses. And the OCI for gains and losses is a temporary account, which is then closed to accumulated OCI. And so what I've done here is I've prepared a little T account for us to keep track of the accumulation of unrealized gains and losses of these bonds. And even though in this journal entry here, the debit is to a temporary account, that ends up being closed out to AOCI. So the balance in accumulated OCI for this investment will be 29,910 going forward. The next step is to record the premium amortization and the payment at June 30th, 2021. You'll notice here that this FVOCI investment account here starts with the remeasured balance of 602,293. There's not enough room to go from the very beginning, so that's why it's cut short. Now, the other thing to notice here, too, is that if we look at the amortization schedule down here, it's the original amortization from the very first calculation. It does not match the T account balance, and it's not supposed to, and this is one of the complexities when we're dealing with FVOCI investments. 
What we have here is on June 30th, 2021, the company will receive cash of $15,000. We know this. It will record interest revenue of 12644 which is basically the 632203 balance in the amortization schedule not the T account this so times 2% is 12644 and then the difference between those two is 2356 so we'll credit FV OCI investments for 2356 leaving a balance in the amortization schedule of 629847 but the premium amortization when adjusted in the T account of 2356 credit will result in a balance in the T account on the balance sheet of 599937 again not the same as the amortization table our next step is to record the disposal of the bonds, but it's going to have to be done in two stages. The first will be to bring the premium amortization up to date for the portion of the bonds that are sold, and that's calculated as part of how much interest the company purchasing the bonds from Tiberius is going to be. So on November 1st, 2021, the company is going to receive cash of $4,000, and we know that that $4,000 is that $15,000 times 40% sold times 4 over 6. That's four months that Tiberius has continued to hold the bonds for. Then what we have to do is determine what the uh, interest revenue is going to be and then the premium amortization of the FEOCI investment. There's a couple ways we could do this. If we look at the amortization table here at the end of June 30th, 2021, the 629,847, if we multiply that by 2%, this will give us the interest revenue in the next period, which will be 12,597. And if we subtract that from the $15,000 normal payment, that is 2,403. Well, that's where this 2,403 comes in. And if we multiply that by 4 over 6 and 40%, this will give us the premium amortization of 641. Alternatively, if we take that 629,847, again, times 2%, and multiply that by 40%, and then the four over six months, this gives us 3,359, which is this number here. And if we take the difference between those two, the difference between the 4,000 and the 3,359, that is 641. So we will credit interest revenue for 3,359 and credit FV OCI investments for $641. And that now brings the balance in the bond account to 599,296 just prior to the full disposal. Now the next step just before the disposal though, and what creates a little bit of a problem for us here is we have to adjust the bonds to their fair value prior to the sale, but only to adjust 40% of the bonds sold, not the entire investment account or asset account. So I've put a little T account here to show that if we looked only at the 40% of the bonds, at June 30th, all of the bonds have a value of 599,937 carried in the FV OCI investment account. Well, if we just looked at the 40% of that, that is 239,975. We had a credit for premium amortization of 641. So we'll put that in our T account because this relates to the portion of the bonds that are sold. Then what we want to do is say, okay, well, the fair value of the bonds that are sold is $196,000. And we know this because we're told that the bonds are sold at 98. There's originally $500,000 face value times the 40% that are sold times 98 gives us 196,000. The plug to this account is 43,334. That's where this number here, this 43,334 comes from. It's to adjust only the proportion of the bonds that are sold. So if we look at this journal entry down here now, we're going to credit FV OCI investments for 43,334. And because this is a reduction in value, this is now an unrealized loss. So we're going to debit the unrealized loss account for OCI investments. And again, this is a temporary account, but that temporary account is later closed to accumulated OCI for investments. So between the original unrealized loss at the remeasurement of December 31st, and then now this additional unrealized loss on the portion of the bonds that are sold, we can keep a running total of this account. 
You might have to watch this a couple of times to make sure you got it straight, but basically this 43,334 is the balance at the end of June times 40% minus the premium and then minus the 196,000 fair value of the bonds that are sold. Now the next entry is super easy. It's just to record the amount of cash received on the sale of the investments. So we are going to receive cash of 196,000. So debit cash 196 and credit FV OCI investments for 196. And you can see here between this cash amount of 4,000 and this cash amount 196,000 is the total amount of money that Tiberius will receive for the bonds with the face value at 98 plus accrued interest of $4,000 that it is due for holding those bonds until October 31st, 2021. Now there's another step to this here that has to do with IFRS and FEOCI debt investments. I brought up this T account now of the AOCI investment account that showed again the original unrealized loss on the first remeasurement that gave a balance at the end of December of 2020 of 29,910. We have an additional unrealized loss of the remeasurement of the bonds that are sold of 43,334, giving a total of $73,244. Then what we have to do is all of this 43,334 relates to the 40% of the bonds that are sold. And then the original 29,910 relates to all of the bonds. So what we need to do is adjust that remeasured loss by 40%. So that basically what we're doing here is move 43,334 plus 40% of 29,910, which is 55,298. And we have to move it to a loss on sale in net income. This is called recycling. So we will debit a loss on sale, 55,298, and credit accumulated OCI investments for 55,298. So this leaves a balance in the account going forward of 17,946, which is the 60% of the beginning 29,910, right? Because 60% of those bonds continue to roll forward and they're not adjusted until either a remeasurement or a sale. So now we can proceed with the December 31st, 2021 payment. Now to do this, we need to go back to our original amortization schedule. And at this point, we adjusted $641 for the premium amortization for the bonds that were removed, resulting in a balance of 629206 Then 40% of those are sold. So there's an adjustment to the amortization schedule of 251.298, but not to the T account balance itself because what the original entry for the disposal was was 196,000, which came out of the T account. So this results in a balance moving forward of 377.908. That's the remaining 60%. So if we multiply that times our 2%, will give us 75.58 on the remaining bonds and so the difference between 9,000 and 75.58 is premium amortization of 1,442. At December 31st the company will record cash of $9,000 but interest revenue of 7,558 based on the amortization table and then a credit to the FE OCI investment of 1,442. So the balance at December 31st, 2021, before the next year-end remeasurement is now 358,520 after taking out the premium amortization of 1442, but that 358,520 is not the same as the 376,446 in the amortization table and it's not supposed to be. Right, and now for the remeasurement. The remeasurement's pretty easy. Now in this case, in the data we're told that at December 31st, 2021, the bonds are valued at par. So that's what par means at their face value. There are 60% of the bonds left. The original was 500,000, 60% is left as 300,000, and that's their par value. So all we do is take the difference between the balance before remeasurement and the new remeasured balance. So 358,520 before minus 300,000 after is 58,520 which is an unrealized loss because we're bringing the value down to 300,000. 
So to record that on the 31st of December 2021, we're going to debit unrealized gain or loss, which is then closed to AOCI for investments. So debit the unrealized loss of 58,520 and credit FVOCI investments for 58,520. The balance in the OCI account after remeasurement is now 76,466. And that's proved as this 58,520 remeasurement amount plus the 60% of the original 29,910 remeasurement, which was for all the bonds, right? 40% are sold. So basically 17,946 of that remains. So we know that our ending balance in the AOCI account is correct. So now we can skip ahead to record the June 30th, 2022 payment. We'll start our journal entry with a debit to cash of $9,000. That's easy. We use our beginning or original amortization table with now a balance of 376,466. Of course, that times 2% will give us the interest revenue of 75,29. So record that credit interest revenue 75,29. And the difference between those two is the amortization of 1,471. So we will credit FVOCI investments for 1,471. We put that in the T account and that gives us a balance sheet balance of 298,529, which is different from the amortization balance, but that's okay. Whew, that was a lot of work, hey? All right, so now let's close out with some key points to remember. FV OCI bond investments acquired are recorded at their present value of future cash flows. So the face value plus the interest annuity, and that's what we did at the very beginning. If the OCI investments are remeasured to fair value at their year end and prior to a sale, so we saw that. Year end balance, all of it is remeasured, and then prior to a sale, only the portion sold is remeasured. As we saw in the other tutorials, brokerage or transaction fees for investments are added to the investment account. But usually there's no brokerage free on bond transactions because it's kind of just hidden in the price. When FEOCI debt investments are sold, any unrealized gains and losses are reclassified from AOCI to net income. So we saw that with that adjustment to the income statement for a loss, and that's called with recycling. Remember, if only a portion of the investment is sold, then only the corresponding portion of any unrealized gains and losses in AOCI are reclassified to net income. We saw that we had to take all of the remeasurement that was part of the bonds that were sold, but then only a proportion of the prior remeasurement balance. In addition, during a particular fiscal year, unrealized gains and losses on remeasurements to fair value OCI investments are credited or debited to that temporary OCI account that I was referring to. And that allows us to properly report OCI and total comprehensive income on the income statement. At the end of the year, those temporary accounts are closed to AOCI on the balance sheet. And so that's the account that I was showing. So that concludes tutorial 27C. We hope you found it useful. Of course, for additional information and problems, go back to your materials provided with your course.